Hi, I'm Gary Bauman. Welcome. You know the rest of the stuff. This month, I'm going to show you how to draw gears. Beautiful, intricate, precise drawings in Zara using not one, but three methods I'm going to show you. So come on, let's take this lesson out for a spin. First, go to zarazone.com forward slash tutorials. Click the download button, download and extract the files for this month's tutorial. This month, there's only finished files for you to take a look at and to examine. Now, a very good question to get the ball rolling this month is, how do you draw gears like these? Well, I've divided this tutorial into three different approaches. The first one is to edit a polygon starred quick shape. I'm going to show you how to do that with a couple circles momentarily. So open Zara, set up a couple of guidelines in a document so that you can center this polygon. Choose the polygon quick shape tool and then set the uh, number of sides to about 18. You can see the controls I've circled there for where to draw the polygon from. However, if you hold control, you'll be starting it from the center. Now that you have your start polygon, select the ellipse tool. Hold control and shift. Start at the center of the guidelines and drag out. And what you've done is you've constrained the circle to a perfect ellipse and drawn it from the center. What I want you to do now is click the selector tool, hold shift and drag any one of the control handles to the circle outward. When the circle preview comes close to the outer edge of the polygons, right click to drop a copy. Now that you have an inner and outer circle above the polygon, I want you to marquee select using the selector tool all three shapes and then press control shift L to get object alignments. In this box, all you do is click in the center to align everything to its center. With the selector tool, select the outer circle and then hold shift and add to your selection the polygon. Then choose intercept shapes or press control three. You're well on your way there. I want you to select the polygon, shift, click to select the circle and choose add shapes, control one. Ta da, how about that? Now to duplicate what I just did, if you open all the gears.zar, the file you downloaded, what I've done is I've created the inner and outer circles to three variations here. When you move the inside and outside lines, and when you make the uh, polygon more spiky, you'll get different gears. So open that file and play with it. Moving along, now that you have the gear, I think what you want to do is add the braces that go inside most of them. And I'm going to show you how to do this manually, and it's not a hard process, but take the gear that you have, Choose the circle tool and again hold control and shift and then drag and you've got the inner portion of the gear now. And I'm just changing the color here so we can see it better. Now choose the rectangle tool. And what I want you to do is to make a tall narrow rectangle about like that. And what I want you to do again is to select all three shapes. Control shift L and the optical alignment align them both vertically and horizontally then press escape to deselect everything once it's selected click it a second time to put it in rotation mode now hold control and drag 90 degrees right click to drop a copy now take those two shapes and press control 1 to add them add the circle to your selection and subtract shapes that's control plus 2 under the arrange menu now, we could call it quits right now because this is a pretty good looking gear with the braces inside. But what I want to do, actually what I want you to do, is to round the outside corners of this pie piece. Now on the page and layout gallery, I'm going to detach it here and move it over. If I expand this, we can see a guides layer. And what I want you to do is select the guides layer and then select the circle tool. So you're drawing on the guides layer. Hold control and drag a perfect circle. That's about the right size relative to the gear. I want you to zoom in. I also want you to go to wireframe mode so you can see precisely what you're doing and make the circle touch the top of that quarter pie piece exactly. That's going to be your guide. Now what I want you to do is uh, to right click, drag and drop a copy and once you're over there, zoom in. Hopefully you've got your options set so the uh, mouse wheel zooms you in and out. And make them touch just about perfectly the uh, bottom part of this pie piece. Now that you've got the guides there, uh, what I want you to do is lock them. Now with the shape tool, click to create a node. 
at both uh, intersections, you can marquee select that corner and hit delete or backspace and it's gone. Now I created a little problem here because this corner here is smooth and I want a cusp. So I changed that in the info bar. Now when I drag it, it snaps to the uh, guides that we created, the circular guides. And uh, I think you want to finesse those handles just a little bit more. Try to get it as close as you can. Don't be afraid to zoom in. And once you've got those uh, two nodes, those two control points uh, lined up, I want you to do the same thing at the top. Add a point. Add a point by clicking with the shape tool. Marquee select the one that we anticipate is smooth and make it cusp. Marquee select the corner and then press delete or backspace. And now I'm moving this with the shape tool. And you'll find it goes pretty, pretty fast. And you've got a pretty accurate selection when you're zoomed in. Plus that guide is trying to snap that outline. So once you've done that, you can go back to uh, full quality mode. Now that you have one quarter of the negative space of these braces created, you really don't need the three other pieces that are unedited. So I want you to choose Arrange Break Shapes or use the button on the Arrange toolbar. And once they are four separate pieces, you um, actually don't need um, the other three. They can just serve as reference. So what I'm doing is I'm deleting them. Select, hit, delete or backspace. Select the piece that you drew. Click on it again to put it in rotation mode. Drag the piece's rotational center to the center of the gear. Hold control and then drag a rotation handle. Right click to drop a copy. I'm doing that one, two, three. Now right click and this gear looks um, pretty good but what we have to do is we have to finish it. We need to put a uh, circle in the center so this gear can be attached to something. I didn't do that right. I'm holding control and shift and now that I've got it in the center what I'm going to do with the selector tool and I want you to do is to select the five pieces add them together control one is the shortcut now that there's really only two pieces here select them both and you can choose join shapes or subtract shapes which is control plus two and there I think we're up to the point where we have a finished gear outline. I think the only thing left to do is to delete those circles. You unlock the guides layer and then simply click on them and delete them. Now, one of the things that I think makes a gear look like a gear is by using the conical fill. And that goes from an end color and a start color. However, you can add new colors by double clicking with the fill tool on that arc, which represents the, uh, the gradation from lights to darks. And uh, as you can see, I'm uh, trying to make this a little more interesting looking. But the conical fill is, is one of those fills that really shows off um, what a gear could look like because it, I, I'm making it look as though it's milled and uh, there are uh, several highlights and dark lights on it. Um, I want you to do this too. Uh, you don't have to do it exactly like I am. But as you can see, if you double click, you add a stop. On that, uh, on that arc gradient and when you think you've got something that looks pretty good what I want you to do is uh, possibly rotate it and go get the 3D tool click on the 3D up in the info bar and extrude the gear now you don't need rounded. What I think you really want is a, a 30 degree bevel and make that only about four or five up on the info bar. Now what I'm doing here is I'm angling it using the controls, the angle one, angle two, and angle three. Now I'll tell you right now, it's almost impossible to rotate this gear in 3D. But if you want an animated gear, you go get Zara 3D Maker. As you can see here, what I did was I brought the Zara file in, slowed down the uh, rotate preset for animation, gave it a kind of a beveled edge and some interesting lighting. And there you go. Now, approach two, we're not done yet. If you blend the notches around a circle, the teeth 
of the uh, gear around a circle, you can also create a gear. And this time, you aren't limited to uh, straight teeth, um, unless you're a dentist. What I'm doing here is I'm creating a rectangle, double clicking on the corners to make soft corners, control shift S to convert this to editable shapes, I'm marquee selecting the side and I'm nudging the left side, now I'm selecting the bottom of the right side, nudging it, and I'm making a, a visually more interesting tooth to the gear. I've created a circle, because I'm going to go over the top of this and show you a really fancy gear. Now that I've got those two objects on the screen, what I do is I choose alignment. I only want to align them horizontally, not vertically. If I uh, add the shapes by pressing Control 1, I've got one interesting shape. What I want you to do now is to right click, drag, drop a copy, marquee select both of them, and then choose the blend tool from the effects menu. Make sure that the control points that you're clicking on match so there's no rotation going on or anything. Because I want you to select the circle and the blend now and then choose the blend tool again. Up in the info bar you have fit blend to curve and then you have rotate along curve. So all the pieces are oriented correctly. I think we want more than five copies so I've just asked it to make 18 copies. Now this is a live effect at the moment so control click on the circle and say copy circle and then press Control shift v to paste it back in place. Give it a thicker outline so you can see the difference between that one and the linked one. Put it to back and give it a unique color. Now what I want you to do is to select the blend objects and convert them to editable shapes. That's Control shift s Control click the red circle and delete it. Click delete. Now all you have is a group of gear shapes and your copy of the circle and what I want you to do is to hold shift and make it smaller and then right click and drag another copy. Now that you've got the uh, circle and the blend step selected, I want you to uh, add shapes which is control 1. Then with the circle inside selected, do subtract shapes. And I'm just going to give this a very simple gradient. But you can see this is the second way. Let's try approach three, which is to uh, drop a copy once you've made uh, your tooth to the gear around the circle. So first of all, we want to decide how many degrees the nudge constraint is. 360 degrees is a circle. Suppose we want 18 teeth. That means that your angle constraint needs to be 20. Control shift O will get you options. And in the nudge constraint, type 20 and click OK. Now every time you hold control and drag on the rotation mode of uh, one of the pieces, it'll only move 20 degrees. Now create the circle and we're gonna go simple on this one. I want you to drag a couple guidelines to the exact center of this because we need to match that with the teeth. To create the teeth for uh, this gear, I'm going to ask you to just make a real simple ellipse. You'd be surprised how effective this is going to be. And put it toward the top. And that's your first tooth on there. Select both. Control Shift L. And only align vertically. Now that they're aligned, um, I'm going to change the colors of these pieces so you can see the effect a little more clearly. And I'm choosing uh, kind of Hawaiian colors. Now what you do is you click on the ellipse, click it a second time to get the center of rotation, move it down to those crosshairs. Now hold control, drag, and right click to drop a copy. Do that again, and one more time, and one more time, and I think what you want to do now is why not select them all. Now that they're in rotation mode, take the center of the rotation, put it in the center of the crosshairs, Control click and you can see the live preview is filling these in and this is making pretty fast work of it. Now we're going to do a single one. So you set the center and right click after you're done dragging. And what you have now are uh, 18 objects and you can uh, add them together by pressing Control 1. I'm going to use the ellipse tool to create a perfect circle. Hold Control and Shift and drag and uh, remove that. First of all, I need to align those objects. There we go. 
and then uh, arrange join shapes. So that's the third way to build a gear, and I'm all out of tricks, so I'm going to see you next month at...